Hello everyone, my name is Emma Belknap and I'm a research assistant for the Book of Mormon Art Catalogue. Today we're joined by Dr. David James Gonzalez. Uh, David James Gonzalez is a native of Southern California currently residing in Provo, Utah with his wife and four children. He is a professor of history at Brigham Young University and currently serves as the Bishop of the Franklin II Native American Ward. Dr. Gonzalez, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, it's a pleasure, thank you. Yeah, of course. And today we'll be talking about uh, the passage in Come Follow Me, 3rd Nephi 20 through 26. At this point in time in the Book of Mormon, uh, Christ is in the land bountiful, and he covers a lot of topics here. He talks about the coming forth of the Book of Mormon, the gathering of Israel, and the second coming. And today, the painting that we'll be talking about specifically uh, refers to 3rd Nephi 23 in which Christ is talking to, to the disciples there, and uh, he's talking about the records and um, what he would like to have included in them. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had said these words, he said unto them again, after he had expounded all the scriptures unto them which they had received, he said unto them, Behold, other scriptures I would that ye should write, that ye have not. And it came to pass that he said unto Nephi, Bring forth the record which ye have kept. And that is the passage that we can see depicted here in this beautiful painting by Jorge Coco San Santangelo. It's uh, called Jesu Cristo Revise Las Planchas. Uh, it was created in 2008 and uh, it's a painting. Um, well, I guess we'll uh, just jump right into it. Um, my first question for you, Dr. Gonzalez, is how does this artwork interpret this scripture that I just read? Yes, I think, you know, quite literally, it refers directly to Jesus first reviewing their scriptures. So he asked them to bring the record. They bring it to him. And then he, he looks like he's studying, right? He looks like he's looking for something in this one, right? He, he already knows, the, perhaps, right, that they didn't record what he was going to ask them about. Um, but a lot of my mind was thinking to, uh, you know, just how much, you know, the artist, how much uh, Jorge Coco you know, depicts, I think, Jesus's intention um, and close focus on the scriptures, on the records themselves. And mm. that really got me thinking a lot too, well, why are they so important? I mean, in, mm. in that, like, this is Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, you think his words supersede scripture, but actually, right, his words are the scripture. Yes. Right. And uh, so a lot of my mind was thinking on some of those things. But Yeah, I think that's a great reference uh, to the beginning of John, right? The word was with God and the word right. was God. And that's that's fascinating that he's, yet yeah, that interaction between him being scripture, but then also just searching so intently for what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. I think that is maybe a great attestation to the fact as well of uh, how important scripture should be in our lives if they're this important in his. Certainly. Yeah. I think uh, I was thinking of those, some of those things, again, about the importance of scriptures and uh, what do they teach and why is he referring to them? Mm. I think in how he, he's referring to the scriptures and, and teaching from them in, in chapters 20 through 26, mm -hmm. it includes him both quoting scriptures, quoting prophets, right? So he yes. quotes Isaiah. Yeah. Um, I believe in chapters, is it 21 and 22? I think uh, so. I think so, right? Yeah. Which is interesting because Nephi had done that 600 years earlier. Yes. And so he's kind of pointing back to a record that they did already have mm -hmm. um, and prophecies that were shared with them, um, referring to the gathering of Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, but then he also he provides them with new ones. I mean, in in, um, verse, in chapters 24 and 25, I believe he tells them that he was going to give them new scriptures, and mm -hmm. he's giving them chapters 3 and 4 of Malachi, yeah. which refer to his, his second coming, I yes. believe. Yeah. And something that you just touched on that I love uh, from the scriptures as a whole is how often it feels like things are repeated. Mm -hmm. The repetition of Isaiah throughout the Book of Mormon. Right. Um, and it just tells me these things are important, but also the fact of God's words aren't necessarily changing. Right. It's that I need to actually be paying attention to them so that right. they don't need to be repeated. Yeah, that makes me think of the comfort that I get from the consistency yes. that I see in the scriptures. Uh, and 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 the Christ was consistent in that throughout both his ministry in, you know, throughout the Holy Land, right? But yes. then also when he comes to the New World, the whole time he's teaching the scriptures. Yes. He's quoting prophets. He's showing that he's a fulfillment of prophecy. He's showing with Samuel the Lamanite. It's almost like, well, I told you this was going to happen and it happened yeah. and you didn't record it, right? Mm -hmm. But again, it's, I don't, how much of that was a rebuke or not, but I think it, it again illustrates how important it was for him to show that 
the prophets knew. I told you know the prophets that this was going to happen, and it did in fact happen. And in a way, it's just that right. So you can trust me. You can believe me. Yes. So that you know that consistency that comes from his message. There's a continuity that comes from the message. God is the same, right? He's mm-hmm. not changing. Yes. His teachings are the same, right? And yeah. So the teachings he gave again in the old world are the same as those that he gives in the new world. Yes. And something that I was thinking about as I was thinking about uh, the words that he he gave them here and and what he was talking about is how we're still receiving that same message today Mm -hmm. about how prophets are still telling us record things, write things down, journal. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just interesting. That message has been the same with the Nephites here and it's the same for us today, that consistency as you were talking about. I think also I was so in, is it in 26, he tells him there's, you know, we're, we're told by Mormon, right, that there's so much that could have been recorded that he couldn't, yes. yeah. right? And that even Christ said, you know, there's other scriptures I have that I want you to have, right? And mm-hmm. there's other records, but withhold this, right, for yeah. now. Um, and then if we are faithful, right, since this record was meant for us, yes. if we're faithful, you know, to these records, if we value them and, and learn from them, then more scripture will be given to us. And mm-hmm. that is, in fact, what we have with living prophets, yes. right? It's I'm always waiting for, right, when that unsealed portion of the Book of Mormon is going to come about. Me or too, absolutely. <laughs> can we get this portion of the plates that's referred to? But yet we have prophets that are continuously um, giving us additional scripture, additional teachings, and those, as we put them in, you know, in, in line with what we're taught from the Book of Mormon or other scriptures, they're all consistent. Yeah, and I think that's a great tie-in back to the scripture and Samuel the Lamanite, as you were talking about, how maybe they didn't view it as scripture they just thought like oh this is a prophet yeah. of our time this isn't scripture this is just this guy on a wall and how sometimes i think i have the tendency to do the same where i'm like oh that's that's not scripture it's just president mm, nelson up mm-hmm. there right yeah no that's a that's a neat thought and uh, you know to, uh, yes how much we can discount something yes in you know the present in the moment of it and not realize how significant it was later on yeah and can you imagine if um, Christ hadn't come, he hadn't given them these commandments and told them the words of Samuel the Lamanite need to be in this record, what, not necessarily that our practice would be different, mm-hmm. but I think my understanding of the gospel would be slightly different and we wouldn't have that miraculous story of, of bravery and of faithfulness. Mm-hmm. So, right. yeah, what a blessing that they, they followed through. <laughs> Certainly. Um, and I think that's a, a kind of good segue into the next question is, um, we've talked about um, the idea behind this painting, what's being depicted here. Um, what do you feel like makes this artwork unique and what strikes you as you're looking at it? Yeah, for me, and, and definitely not being a, a scholar of LDS art or theology, <laughs> my expertise is, is in way different fields, but I was more looking at this picture as it kind of made an, a personal impact on me you know, growing up in the 80s and 90s, uh, a lot of the, the work, the artwork that I saw, Book of Mormon artwork, was of kind of like the, the uh, Freiburg style stuff, right? Yes. Um, they were included in the Book of Mormon pages, and, and I liked those. I didn't really ever have much to compare it to. Yeah. I think in the last few decades, I've seen an explosion, right, of mm-hmm. Book of Mormon art, and particularly those that try to be perhaps a bit more representative, you know, of the yes. people, of the place, of the time. So we see Mesoamerican culture, a, a much more, uh, I think, intentional effort to represent Mesoamerican culture and people, um, which is something as I've always read the Book of Mormon, I've tried to imagine um, what what did it look like, yeah. right? Um, and so I, I appreciate that effort, and I appreciate Jorge Coco's work for, for that reason, among many many others. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, that especially comes from the fact that uh, Jorge Coco is from Argentina, um, and I love that he is really representing, I think, again, what, what you said, what I also believe is that this is what the Book of Mormon looks like, mm-hmm. this is what these events actually look like. Um, something that I notice as well is the fact that there's those stela in the background that looks like there's stepped pyramids. Mm -hmm. There's a man who's wearing ear flares, and those are all hallmarks of Mesoamerican cultures, um, of the Mesoamerican archaeology that's been done on on, on different cultures there. And it's uh, just really lovely that he's incorporating these things and thinking about what would this actually look like. Yeah, I can only imagine that that stemmed from a, a personal desire. 
Yeah. Um, you know, to see work that was more representative and consistent, perhaps, yes. of what he was exposed to yes. uh, growing up. I mean, we see that's a very, that's a commonality in, mm -hmm. in a lot, not just in art, but uh, even in history. Uh, you know, as a, as a professor of history, I tell my students all the time, history is you know, a collection of the stories that we tell ourselves to give ourselves a sense of identity. And I think that's mm. a quote from Mark Twain um, in some way, or I'm paraphrasing yeah. <laughs> that there. But it's, I see that, I, I think, in, in art, and I see that as, a, as something that's legitimate. I mean, in mm -hmm. many ways, we're all kind of guessing, right? We're trying to get yes. as close to the truth as we can. Yes. And I see this as an effort to do that. Yes. But I also, I, I just, I love that art is trending that way right now. Looking mm -hmm. through the Book of Mormon art catalog and working on it, that's been one of my favorite things is seeing art artists grapple with what would this actually have looked like. Mm -hmm. And uh, not to bag on, on the Freeburg paintings that you grew no, up with, right. but that was perhaps not how that looked. Right. And I love that we're trying to to figure that out and to, to also just make Book of Mormon art more inclusive. Mm -hmm. I think everyone should be able to see themselves in in the stories that they're hearing and the stories that they love. So certainly, I mean, we're taught that with the scriptures, right? We're supposed to liken them unto ourselves, yes. and so not to necessarily liken them to another people, but we're supposed to see ourselves in them, right? Mm -hmm. Apply the the prophecies, the teachings to us and what we're dealing with, and and so certainly. Yes. All right. Well, last question before we wrap up. Um, I think we touched on this a little bit already, but. Can you share your personal reaction to this artwork and the scriptures associated with it? Mm -hmm. Again, I find it, you know, comforting. Uh, again, I, it would be neat to, um, I try to imagine what the, you know, eight or twelve-year-old or sixteen-year-old me um, would think seeing it, because it's not something that I was exposed to. Uh, and again, what it represents uh, or tries to depict, I, I, I see it as a, you know, a a honest attempt, you know, to show Christ the significance that he places on the scriptures mm -hmm. and his call. I mean, repeatedly throughout these chapters, we're told, search the scriptures diligently, mm -hmm. uh, right? We're, we're taught that, um, particularly in chapters 23 and 26, that Christ expounds the scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. We should, so we should both study them, we should be able to expound them and teach them and testify of them. In that, Christ is, is a model. He's a model of everything that we should do with the scriptures. So both the value that he placed on them uh, and amongst the Nephites, I think, are depicted here. Yeah, lovely. Well, thank you so much for being with us again. Of course. It was amazing to hear your insights and, and to get to see this artwork in a, in a new way um, and through your own eyes. So thank you so much. And, and thank you again for joining us this week. We hope that uh, this is informative to your Come Follow Me studies and that um, you'll be able to continue to use the catalog to learn more about the scriptures that you're studying and the scriptures that you love.